Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and today's video is another episode of our Wix Studio basic series where I'm showing you all the basics of Wix Studio. If you missed the last episode, I kind of showed you around the editor. And if you missed that, then I highly suggest you check the description below to a link to the full playlist. But for today's video, we're gonna be checking out the inspector panel. So let's go ahead and get started. Here I am inside of Wix Studio and what we're gonna do is cover the inspector panel. Now, what that is, is it's basically the panel over here on the right hand side. Now, if you're like me currently and you don't see the panel on the right hand side, then you might need to click this little arrow right here to open the inspector panel. Now, if I go ahead and close this, close out all of these, you'll basically see that the inspector panel consists of a couple of things. Just by default, it has different tabs up here at the very top, and it also has different drop down sections that you can go ahead and open up. Now, one thing I do want to cover is depending on what you have selected here on the artboard, will change the tabs that you have available up here and it will also change the amount of drop downs that you have and the different settings that you may have inside of each of these drop downs for example right now we have the page selected so we have the design tab and we have the animation and effects tab then we have background settings layout settings and a cursor settings when i open these up you can kind of see just how kind of basic a lot of these settings are However, if I go ahead and select on a section on the page, you're gonna see that now we have size settings, we have more design settings, we have more layout settings, we now have position, we have cursor, and we also have anchor at the very bottom. So we have a bunch of different types of settings that we now can change just from this section. However, if I go ahead and add, let's say a container to the website, you can now see a lot of the things are the same, but some of it is also different. We also now have the adjust options as well. So depending on what element that you have selected here on the artboard is gonna change what options you have over here on the right-hand side in the inspector panel. I will also wanna mention that if you have an item selected inside of a section, you also get the align options here. So I can align things to the left, to the right, to the middle, to the top, to the bottom, or again, the middle. Or if you have something that's like off-centered and you want it to be completely centered both vertically and horizontally, you can press align to center option right there. And the one thing I do like about this align options here is I could be down in the settings for position, but this align options are always sticky. So no matter what settings I'm currently viewing, I'll always have the align options at my disposal. Now, before we kind of cover even more stuff here in the design tab, I kind of want to explain another tab that you might get. For example, if I come over to CMS and press start now, here, I'm just basically adding a database to our website, and I'm just gonna start with a preset here. Basically generate a spreadsheet with fake information or filler information. I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. It's also gonna add a couple of pages for us, and you can kind of see how the content from inside of the CMS database is populating here on the page. But the reason I wanted to show you this is because if I go ahead and click on this repeater element here, inside the inspector panel, you're gonna see we have a brand new tab for CMS connections. And this is kind of how we connect things to repeaters, how we can control which data set that we're currently viewing and go into the database settings for filtering or sorting. And then we can connect like the text right here connects to the name, this text connects to job title, this text connects to probably their bio, and then the image, of course, right here connects to their image from the database. So that is another tab that you could see here inside of the inspector panel. Before we cover like the design settings, and the next tab I want to kind of just cover quickly is the animation and effects. Now, I don't wanna cover this in too much detail because I do probably plan to release a full video kind of covering all of the different types of settings that you have for this. However, the important thing is if you, anytime you wanna add any sort of animation to your website, you do that here. So for example, if I wanted to have the stack 
right here fade in i could grab the stack come over to entrance animation and we could fade it in and we can go ahead and preview this so anytime the user comes to this page this stack kind of fades in it looks really really nice but that kind of shows you the effects that you can apply to your website and you have different options like entrance hover click scroll loop mouse effects and even if you have like a section and you add maybe a background image to it and then go back over to the animation and effects we also now have webgl effects which these are actually really really cool so for example if i just go ahead and press one of these options maybe liquify will be a little bit easier to see but as the user hovers through this you can kind of see like the effect it's kind of giving obviously a picture of coffee uh, doesn't really make much sense for this effect but you kind of get the general idea that i'm trying to say these animation and effects are really really cool but now let's go back over to the home page really quickly and what I want to do now is just head on over to the design tab right here. Now, if you watch my last video, what I really want you guys to understand is the left hand side, basically in all of these icons and especially obviously in the ad panel, what you're mostly doing from the left hand side is adding things to the artboard. Then what you're doing on the right hand side is then you are then editing what you have selected on the artboard. So we just added this image and now under the design tab, we now have different design settings we can then apply to the image. So for example, for this image right now, you can see we have squared off edges, but let's say we want to round those. So we can come over to the design settings for this image and maybe we'll set this like 42. And now you can see we have rounded the edges here and maybe we want to add like a border. So we can select a color for the border and maybe give it a little bit of width. And now you can see we have a blue border around this image here now depending on what element we have selected we might have different settings here like i mentioned before so for a text element we're going to have the font choice so we can change the font we can change the font size we can change the color we have different styles the alignment formatting options and so on and so forth for svg or vector files we mostly just have the color and we can even add like a shadow now for things like menu elements, we're going to have even more options. So for example, we can add a background fills or an, even a background image. Uh, we can add text, borders, dividers, corners, shadows, but not just that. We can also edit the hover states. So maybe on hover, we want the text to turn blue or something like that. And then we can change the selected state as well. But not just that, we can then also go over to the menu containers and also edit these designs as well. So again, depending on which element you have selected, you can have different settings, different dropdowns. They'll edit different states of each of those elements and so on and so forth. And for buttons, when I add a button, you're going to see that we don't have like a drop down to change the state, but we have like this little um, tabs right here so we can edit the regular state and the hover state for buttons just really easily and then we also have things like repeaters or other layout tools that might have other options so for example for this repeater under layout we might have things like display type so right now it's set to cards but we can have it set to slider grid cells a list whatever we need it to be and then we also can set different like a b patterns directions items per row the gaps in between it padding all of the different settings um, down below we then have margins and we also above that have like padding however just like what i mentioned earlier in the video for you know animations and effects i do plan to make a full video covering margins and padding in the future because there is enough information to cover its own video but in short if you're interested now and don't want to wait for that video to come out basically margin is space on the outside and padding is space on the inside so for example if i grab this item and i add maybe like 24 pixels of padding you're going to see it kind of pushes inward the spacing so now if i go ahead and add an image 
to this repeater and stretch it, you're going to see that the padding still keeps its space around it. So we don't accidentally uh, put content in here. Now let's do the opposite now. So let's go ahead and talk about margin. So if I go ahead and delete this repeater, let's just grab this container right really quickly and I stretch it. Well, if I go ahead and go down to margin, we can maybe set this to like 5%. Well, that's going to push away from its parent element. So it's basically going to add 5% on the outside of this container, right? I hope that makes sense. But again, I plan to make a full tutorial on that in a little bit later. But overall, that is kind of like the main gist of the inspector panel. You add things from the left, you edit them on the right. And depending, and there are a lot of different settings that you can apply, especially for things like containers, right? If you have a container, you can then split this into an advanced CSS grid and you can add different columns and add different rows to create a custom grid, which is really nice. You can edit the margin and padding. You can add the position type. So if you want it to be sticky, you can, but again, I'll cover that in a later video. If you want to change the opacity, rotation, scale, skew, translation, all that can be edited right here. And probably one of the more important things, again, I'll probably cover this in a later video, and I'm, I'm sorry, you, you're probably getting tired of hearing me say that, but here we have these size settings as well. So for example, maybe we want this container to be 90% width of our artboard. So what I can do is set this to 90% width. And if I just go ahead and center this using the align options, you can see that the width is 1152, which is 90% of our editing size, which is 1280. So basically we have 5% here and 5% here. So that's what the sizing property does. Um, you can even change the responsive behavior. So right now it's set to scale proportionately. So that means when we make the website bigger or smaller, the box is going to scale proportionately to the size of our browser. Now we have different options here for relative width. We can set it to a fixed size so it doesn't get bigger or smaller. We can even stretch this container. Um, but similar to a lot of the different design settings that we have here, it kind of depends on what element we have selected. So for example, if I grab this text element, you're gonna see that we don't have this all of the same um, responsive behaviors that we had for this container here. We have some of the same options, but a lot of them are different. So we have hug, wrap, custom scale. We don't have relative width and stuff like that. So with the response behavior, design settings, and a lot of these different settings here in the inspector panel, they're gonna be different depending on the element you have selected. And that's really important. And I'm not gonna obviously cover everything because there is so many different types of elements and so many different types of settings that you can change with each one of those different elements. But if you are interested, I suggest just kind of playing around, you know, add a button here and you know check the design settings that you can apply and check the responsive behavior and kind of just play around with it but now that i've kind of shown you guys how the inspector panel works i think it's up to you guys to play around with the different elements and see all the capabilities that the inspector panel has for you but that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's video if you all did enjoy please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more work studio content coming out really soon Thank you all again, and I will see you on the next one.